Arkansas Twister at Magic Springs in Hot Springs, Arkansas is one of the lesser written wooden roller coasters in the United States. So you typically don't hear too many reviews about this relocated wooden roller coaster. But was it good? Eh, not really. Arkansas Twister originally opened in 1978 as the Florida Hurricane at the now defunct Boardwalk and Baseball. When that park closed in 1990, Magic Springs purchased Florida Hurricane for just $10,000, which is quite the bargain. However, the total cost of the project came out to almost $900,000 for Magic Springs when you include the relocation and restoration costs. But that's still a pretty good deal to get a full-size wooden roller coaster for under $1 million. From the name, you'd think Arkansas Twister has a twister layout. However, it's a long out-and-back coaster. And that was a bit tricky for Magic Springs to accommodate. If you've never been to Magic Springs, it's an extremely hilly park with a ton of trees. The only plot of land that worked was the back left corner, which is in no man's land. Arkansas Twister is all on its own. To get to this coaster, you have to walk through their entire water park and head back towards the park's amphitheater. For this reason, the coaster usually opens about an hour after the rest of the park. It also did not have a line on the day I visited. The coaster's remote location also makes it near impossible to get off-ride footage of this ride. The only parts of the ride visible from within the park are the 95-foot tall lift hill and the finale. The rest of the ride is deep within the woods. At Boardwalk and Baseball, this coaster ran with three bench PTC trains, and I believe it originally ran with those trains when it opened at Magic Springs in 1992. However, Magic Springs closed from 1996 to 1999, and when Magic Springs reopened in 2000, Arkansas Twister was running Gerslauer trains. And I don't know if that's a good thing. People like to hate on the Gerslauer wooden coaster trains, but in general, I don't mind those trains. I actually like the lap bars more than those found in PTC trains because the Gerslauer lap bars don't tend to staple me as the ride progresses. The only issue I consistently have with the Gerslauer trains is that they aren't well padded, which is an issue on a rough wooden roller coaster. But for the most part, Arkansas Twister is not too rough, thankfully. The pullout from the first drop and far turnaround are bad in wheel seats, but outside of that the ride isn't overly bumpy. What I do wonder is if Arkansas Twister, or Florida Hurricane for that matter, ran faster with the old PTC trains. Arkansas Twister is an out and back coaster with one bunny hill after another. However, there's barely any airtime, which is a major flaw for an out and back coaster. Many of the hills are way too drawn out to offer any airtime, even at the ride's max speed. But the train really crawls through the second half, exasperating the issue even further. Arkansas Twister begins with a 95 foot tall lift and a 92 foot tall first drop. The drop isn't super steep, but it gives a teeny tiny bit of airtime in the back row. But don't get used to that airtime. The first two bunny hills are far too drawn out to give any airtime. However, the first bunny hill at least banks to the left, so it offers some mild laterals. But the front row does get its first bit of airtime on the far turnaround. Front row riders get a tiny pop of airtime entering this element. That's followed by this exceedingly slow flat turn. It gives the turn on the Great America and Kings Dominion Grizzly Coasters a run for their money. However, it actually helps Arkansas Twister because it gives you plenty of time to take in the amazing view. Magic Springs is in a really scenic area with the forest and mountains nearby. The drop off this turnaround gives absolutely no airtime, but that's followed by the best bunny hill on the ride. This one looks no different than the other ones, but it actually offers some weak airtime for everyone. That's followed by another drawn out hill that banks to the right, and much to my shock, this hill didn't offer any laterals. Rather, it offered a tiny pop of airtime for front row riders. Then comes one of the most comically bad elements on any coaster, the 7 second camelback. Most of the hills in Arkansas Twister are on the smaller side, but I think this is the ride's third tallest hill after the first drop and far turnaround. Forget about getting any airtime on this hill. Instead, just pray you make it over this hill. You crawl over this hill. Just look at the POV. The train barely makes it over this element. And I'm sort of shocked an empty train can actually clear this element without valleying. 
That hill is then followed by back-to-back -back bunny hills that are completely free of airtime, but at least you don't have to worry about valleying. Then comes the second turnaround. In off-ride, the entrance into this turnaround looked really interesting. The top of the turnaround had one of the sharpest crests I had ever seen atop a hill on a wooden roller coaster. I held out hope in my head it would offer some really abrupt ejector airtime, but then I saw the trim brake. However, the top of this hill is so sharp that even a decelerating train still gives a tiny pop of airtime for front row riders. Then comes the finale, which is laughably bad. The train lumbers around this long flat turnaround before hitting a straightaway. And this straightaway is probably the roughest part of the ride. Thankfully, the train is traveling so slowly that it doesn't hurt. Instead, I found myself laughing at a piece of track that was so straight and so slow could be so bouncy. So what would I rate Arkansas Twister? I'd give this coaster a 4 out of 10. Arkansas Twister isn't bad. Rather, I'd classify it as disappointing. The coaster has the stats of a thrilling wood coaster. The ride is almost 100 feet tall and nearly 3,300 feet in length. But it rides more like a family coaster with the lack of airtime. What I do give the ride credit for is its excellent setting. I love the views the coaster provides of the surrounding area and you feel really isolated in those woods. Those are my thoughts on Arkansas Twister, the only wooden roller coaster in the Razorback state. What are your thoughts on Arkansas Twister? Or do you have memories of the old Florida hurricane when it was at Boardwalk and Baseball? I would love to hear your comments down below. If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate if you gave this video a like and consider subscribing because there will be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for listening.